What's happening, friends of Tried of Health Family Healing Center? This is Dr. Ilya Skolnikov coming to you, doing a little Facebook Live here tonight. Monday night, good time for Facebook Live. So people always ask me, you know, Doc, after I get treated, how can I stay feeling healthy and, and happy and in a good mood and having everything go well for as long as possible? So I don't have to come back here right away and spend more money on your services. And that's a good question and I have a good answer. We need to attack the five fingers of death or we need, need, at least need to know what they are and how to handle them. Finger of death number one, wheat. Finger of death number two, dairy. Finger of death Number three, corn. Finger of death number four, soy. Soy sauce, edamame, soy. Fake chicken, chicken made out of soy. Veggie burgers, usually made out of soy. Bragg's amino acids, made from soy. Finger of death number five, processed sugar. Processed sugar. Processed sugar is just one molecule different than, than cocaine. I know, startling to know. These are the five fingers of death. We can review and go into some more detail here. I'm gonna take notes while we're teaching each other how this works. So we, dairy, corn, soy, and processed sugar. So what's the problem with wheat? Wheat, thank you, Yafa, for watching. By the way, if you're watching and tuning in, please like this post, that would be great. Give us a, you know, like a heart. How do we do a heart here? I'm having some heart issues. A heart, oh, that was nice. Or you could give us like a thumbs up or whatever you wanna do, okay. Share it with people you know who are having trouble with their health. So wheat sloughs off the microvilli and the villi, which are part of the intestinal lining um, of the small intestine. So it causes them to start to have an autoimmune response, meaning they start to, it's a little bit hard to explain it, I guess, but um, there's villi. The villi are the, the things that absorb in the intestine. I don't really have a picture for you here. Let me see if I can draw a picture of these guys for you. Maybe you'll find that helpful if you have a visual. Okay, so we're gonna do some villi. Okay, these are some intestines here. Um, okay, here's some intestine, intestine, intestine. Okay. Okay, this is the best I can do for you right now. Sorry, that's what we got. See, those little, um, those little islets, those little peninsulas there. We'll just say that your intestine is in here. This is where the, the food goes through and you need to absorb it with those villi. And then the microvilli are much smaller. They're on these villi and they're tiny little things. So what happens is they start, oh, thanks. Thank you, Yafa, I'm glad you like my visual, <laughs> okay. Those microvilli start to break down after a while and they just become, they just basically die. They're kind of like a fertile garden of grass that's growing and then it's killed off. And when they die, you can't absorb things properly. And so the wheat will do that. The wheat itself does that. The main components of the wheat that do that are the, the gluteomorphins. The gluteomorphins are the opiate chemicals, the opium, literally, that gets you addicted to wheat. That's not so good. That's not so good if you're having your, your intestines not work properly and then you can't absorb things. So by the way, just in case you're curious, I thought you might wanna know, the small intestine is related to the heart. So somebody who's having trouble with their small intestine is having something like celiac disease or Crohn's disease or they're having, um, I mean, they could have almost anything. Any of the autoimmune diseases are actually intestinal disorders, believe it or not, like rheumatoid arthritis. 
They don't really talk about that much because, you know, the medical establishment's a little bit backwards, but that's true. So the, the other thing that could be uh, happening with your small intestine is you could have, um, probably should be good to think about this a little bit before I say it. Anyway, you know, if you have like ulcerative colitis or colitis, that's more of like the large intestine, but still, there's probably gonna be some problems with the small intestine also. I'm just saying. Okay, next, let's go to dairy. So the other thing about the, the wheat protein is they found that there's some similarities between the wheat protein and other hormones, okay, that your body needs to be healthy, like insulin and cortisol. So because they're so similar, if little particles of wheat that are undigested get through those villi or microvilli, remember the villi, the microvilli, if the particles of wheat get through there, then your body starts to fight them off as though they're a foreign invader substance, like a, you know, like a foreign invader for another, from another planet coming down to earth to kill all the people on earth. <laughs> of course, this is just the movies. That's not real, but now we're having a foreign invader come from outside your body and it's getting into your body through these uh, villi and microvilli in the intestinal wall, and it's not being digested properly, and because it's not digested properly, the body freaks out and goes like, oh, oh no, you know, like, what's, what's going on? These people are coming in and they're invading and they're attacking us. So because the body thinks that it's being attacked, it attacks back, and it attacks back with things called, um, with, with, with the complementary system, <laughs> okay, but anyway, it attacks back with the killer T cells and the B lymphocytes and the T lymphocytes, okay? And it can attack with other things too, but I wanna make it as simple as possible. Like people who have HIV, who are HIV positive, and sometimes they eventually de develop AIDS, they're actually having to attack their own cells because the, the virus duplicates inside the RNA, inside the, the DNA and the RNA, inside the cell itself, which is, pretty not cool. Okay, but anyway, there's treatments for these diseases. People just don't get it, so. All right, so again, wheat, we just discussed wheat. Dairy isn't that much better, <laughs> okay? Dairy also can cause your body to, um, not talking about butter, but the proteins are called casiomorphins or casein. And there's a misunderstanding about rats and cheese, okay? Rats, actually do like to eat cheese, but they don't like the casein. If they're given the, the chance to eat casein, which may, you know is often a component of the cheese, if it's just pure casein, they won't eat that. Thanks for joining, by the way, I, 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 Iona. Please, um, Iona, please you know, share this with people that you know, especially people who have autoimmune disease and digestive disorders, things like panic attacks, ADD, ADHD, bipolar syndrome, um, hair thinning, thinning hair, skin, you know, skin conditions, problems with the nails, dandruff, eczema, psoriasis, psoriatic arthritis. These are all digestive autoimmune disorders. Asthma, rheumatoid arthritis, autoimmune kidney disease. There's a whole bunch of them. There's lots and lots of, you know, there's lots of these guys, okay? Even heart disease can be in many times. Diabetes type two, for example. All right, so the dairy, same thing. So. Now that the, the dairy is coming through, and yes, there's a lot of findings that insulin um, molecules are almost identical, literally, to the, the casein molecules, which is the main protein that's in dairy. So because the molecules are almost identical, the body gets confused. It thinks that maybe its own... Um, its own insulin hormone is a foreign invader and attacks its own insulin and then you end up with the problem metabolizing insulin and then you end up with diabetes. So there's some talk about diabetes either type one or type two could be caused by that. I don't know, you know, I don't really have an opinion about it. I'm just letting you know about some of the research. I don't know. I mean, I know that that's really true research, but I don't really have an opinion. So. 
What I do have an opinion about is that dairy is oftentimes not so good if you have it all the time, okay? I've had patients, many of them actually, quite a few, more than one or two or three, who have come in and, and they were in, bad, in a bad way, okay? They had a, either a pituitary tumor or they had tumors on their breast, uh, breasts that were caused by the dairy because dairy is really, really high in epinephrine and norepinephrine. It's really high in certain hormones like luteinizing hormone and other hormones that help with a normal healthy cycle. It's basically, at least milk, let's say, is fuel to grow a little newborn baby calf into a full grown cow in just less than a full year. So yeah, thanks for the likes, you know, give us a thumbs up, give us a, a heart, you know, share this with people that you know, you really wanna share it with people you know who are not doing well, especially if they have, you know, one of these autoimmune diseases. Hold on a second, I'll be with you. Here, I think I have a more of a, a like a longer list of the autoimmune diseases. I'm just, whoops, I'm just trying to find it because I thought maybe you were interested in that. When I say you, I mean everybody who's watching. Uh, nope, I don't see my autoimmune disease list. But I think you get the basic idea, right? Oh, here it is. Um, yeah, skin problems, sugar cravings, uh, constipation. These are more like symptoms, right? But there's others that are diseases like um, <laughs> thick, there's others that are diseases. These are just symptoms of thyroid disease. So fatigue, unyielding skin conditions, sugar cravings, constipation, sinus congestion, cold hands and feet, loss of appetite, slowed speech, emotional instability, choking sensation, depression, swollen purple eyelids. Oh my God. Do you know anyone who has swollen purple eyelids? Like you just look at their eyelids and they're like purple looking and they're kind of, they're kind of thick. That ha that's called mixed edema. And that happens when somebody has chronic fatigue or chronic fatigue syndrome. You probably have a friend or a family member who has that swollen eyelids thing with the chronic fatigue or the chronic fatigue syndrome. Wow, we've been talking for like, oh, you don't know of anyone? Yeah, I'm glad you thought that was funny, but no, you probably know somebody, you know, somebody who has like maybe some blonde person or something, somebody who has really, fair skin, and you can see the purple in their eyelids. You have to look carefully to see it sometimes. Or what about somebody with like no eyebrows? That's also somebody who's exhausted, who's been eating a lot of sugar, and now they have a thyroid condition. Okay, thanks for commenting. By the way, if you have questions, please post them below. That way we can go over your questions. So there's not, there's not like hundreds of you watching, but you get the idea. You know, If you have questions, feel free to ask your questions. So your body gets confused with this dairy coming in and it thinks it's a foreign invader, it tries to attack it. It thinks maybe it's its own um, insulin because insulin is so similar to the casein molecule. And now you're in big trouble. Now you have one of these autoimmune type diseases, most likely diabetes type one or type two, okay? Also the opiate chemicals, the opium literally is also in the dairy. Yes, it is, it's true. I'm not just making this up. You can always check um, Dr. Natasha Campbell McBride's book called Gut and Psychology Syndrome. So inside, and if, if the opium is coming from dairy, they call it caseomorphins, morphine, right? Morphine, opium. And if it's coming from, um, whoops, wrong book. And if it's coming from wheat, it's called gluteomorphins, as in gluten, gluten versus casein, okay? just depends on the protein molecule. So here's the book. Um, it's maybe backwards because, you know, it's Facebook Live. Here, I'll make it forwards for you. Here's the book I'm referring to, Dr. Natasha Campbell McBride's Gut and Psychology Syndrome. There's the author down there, you see that? Yep, 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 yep. And those are some of the autoimmune diseases, autism, dyspraxia, ADD, ADHD, schizophrenia, dyslexia, and depression. So these are all due to a poor diet. Hey, Kelly Marie, thanks for joining us. Appreciate it. How do you reverse the purple veins? My doctors tell me it shouldn't be a concern. I'm not trying to be disrespectful, but your doctors are not looking in their textbooks. That's called mixed edema. It's due to hypothyroidism, and hypothyroidism has a lot to do with the things that we're talking about right now. 
poor digestion and it has to do with difficulties with blood sugar. That was a really, 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 really good question, Kelly Marie. So the way you reverse it is you, you I hate to be the one to break the news to you, but you gotta get the sugar out of the diet. You gotta get sugar out of your diet. So those purple eyelids, see I told you people have purple eyelids sometimes. You guys aren't, you guys didn't believe me. You thought it was funny that I was telling a joke. It's not funny, I mean, this happens quite a bit. Okay, so you want to get sugar out of the diet and you want to be able to, um, I mean, you want to be able to start to have a healthy, balanced diet. Avoid wheat, dairy, corn, soy, and processed sugar. It sounds easy, but it's quite a bit of a lifestyle change. So yeah, I understand you've had blood work and uh, they're not finding what you're looking for. You might possibly, probably want to call our office. We could probably help. Um, yeah, exactly. See, Kelly Marie is fair-skinned. She's a perfect example. Because if somebody, let's say they're black, like African-American or whatever, black from another country like Africa or whatever country, doesn't matter, it's harder to see because, you know, they have the dark skin, right? You won't see that purple eye, um, purple veins on their eyelids or the puffy eyelids. You just don't think about it, especially people from India or Africa, right? If they're dark Indian or dark black from not dark black, but you know, black, whatever, it's harder to see. But a person um, who's maybe more fair than me, who has, you know, a light brown hair or blonde hair, um, or they're just white, you know, they're just white, kind of like me. I, I've got olive skin. It's really easy to see. So this is a true sign of exhaustion, not necessarily what they call chronic fatigue syndrome, because we don't have to make names for everything and act like we're solving a problem when we're really not. But let's just call it somebody who's been tired for a long time, okay? If you've been tired for a long time, which, Kelly, have you been tired for a long time? I'm assuming you've been tired for a long time. So that's chronic fatigue. It's due to poor digestion. It can be treated, okay? This is, there's, we have an unlimited number of therapies for this. Usually we can help people quite quickly, but it all begins with the initial exam the exam in our office is, um, it just takes about an hour. We ask you all kinds of questions about things that you've done in the past to get help with your health and your diet and things that you've gotten, that you've done to, that have been really helpful with your health and helping you with your energy, things that you've done that haven't helped a whole lot and then things you might've done that worked for a while and then stopped working. Um, and so um, I'm willing to bet, you know, what I'm, saying is that maybe Kelly, you have a little bit of, you're a little tired, you know, from, from day to day, maybe not every single day, but certain times of the week, or at least I'm convinced you could have a lot more energy because that's what causes that. And the thyroid gland is the main gland along with the adrenal glands that help with energy. Narcolepsy. What about narcolepsy? Having trouble sleeping properly? Okay. That often has to do with something called retrograde lymphatics. Um, oh, you're in Florida, okay. Well, we do phone consultations also, which is good. So <laughs> we can still help. Thanks for watching, Albert. Thanks for tuning in. So, okay. So anyway, so wheat, dairy, corn is especially bad. Um, corn is when uh, what happens, they've done studies all over since the 1960s. We're going to talk about narcolepsy. Sorry, I'm not forgetting about you. Yeah, don't worry. Okay. So since the 1960s, in the 1940s even, they did this research study. You can check it out on YouTube if you're able to find it. I, I tried to find it, but I couldn't. Um, where they did a, a research study of these different people that were in prison, these inmates. And they said, hey, look, we're willing to give you your freedom. If all you'll do is participate in this simple study where you just change your diet for, you know, two, three, four months, whatever. So of course, all the inmates were like, yeah, oh, I want to be free. I don't want to be in jail anymore. I'll change my diet. So they said, okay, no problem. We'll let you eat whatever you want. So then they let them eat kind of like whatever they wanted, but it has to be these foods, you know, these foods that you enjoy. So they started giving them corn on the cob and corn mash and they gave them all kinds of different um, 
like polenta, and this was a long time ago though, so polenta wasn't very popular. So they gave them all these different corn dishes and a few other dishes, and sure enough, like within a, just a month or two, the inmates started having all kinds of major B vitamin nutritional deficiencies. They had pellagra, they had um, B1 deficiency, B3, so they were nice and deficiency, nice and deficient. They had um, uh, protein wasting disease, meaning they started having all kinds of problems. They would have pitting edema. Pitting edema is when you push into the skin and then it leaves a, even when you remove your, your, your thumb or your finger, it leaves a mark anyway. So these were people who were getting really, really sick and they got really sick really fast. Then, of course, they tried putting them on the healthy diet again and pretty quickly they got better also. So all this is understood since 1940s, really. Corn is really bad, um, if you, especially if you have it often. If you have it every now and then, it's not so bad, but corn causes dermatitis, diarrhea, dementia, and depression, and obviously that's pretty bad, right? It can maybe even cause death at some point, but, but that would take more time. So um, for somebody who has a lot of um, difficulty with their, um, their sleep, like narcolepsy, that's also a digestive disorder because we have more um, cells. This is kind of interesting. I think you'll like this, hearing about this. Um, Yafa, we have more cells in our digestive tract than we have in our entire body. Seriously? Yeah, no, I'm serious. You have, we have more cells in our digestive tract than we have in our entire body. And um, I guess I really need these glasses, so I might as well put them back on. <laughs> Getting a little bit older here, like 49 years old, you know? So, and then we have more cells, uh, I'm sorry, we have no, more nerve connections in our guts than we do in our entire brain. So really we have several brains in the body, um, but think of the main brain as being your digestive tract. That's why they have that expression, I had a gut feeling about that, Yaffa. I had that gut feeling, Yaffa. Man, you should have listened to me. Man, if you just listened to my gut feeling, we wouldn't be in jail right now. We've been here since Friday night, now it's Monday. Man, you know, nobody's bailing us out because nobody knows about us being in jail right now. You should have listened to me. Anyway, I'm just kind of joking around, but also being serious. So the reasons that we have those gut feelings is because about 99% or even more of the neurotransmitters that we make are first coming from protein, meaning mostly meats, that we um, chew and then we swallow, and then we break down the proteins in our stomachs. 80% of digestion happens in our stomachs, and then we start to absorb them in our intestines. Um, so it's not until the proteins are broken down into amino acids, and the amino acids are broken down to neurotransmitters, that then cause us to feel a certain way, or sleep well at night, or sleep poorly at night. Oh my God, we've been talking for a long time. It's been like a 25 or 30 minute Facebook Live. Okay, I think we're gonna be done with this Facebook Live really soon, but anyway, we haven't gotten to soy or sugar yet, but so it's because of how well our digestive tract works that allows us to sleep well at night, feel sad, feel happy, have pain or no pain, and that's what causes us to be able to sleep well and have a stable mood or not sleep well and not have a stable mood. So any real true sleep disorder is mostly, not always, but mostly related to poor digestion. Sometimes people have head trauma, you know, they get in a car accident and then they can't sleep well. But um, you're welcome, I'm glad you like the Facebook Live. We're doing them pretty regularly. This is like the third one this, this week, actually, during the last four days. But the other one was on my um, personal account. So he might not have, depending, you might not have seen it. So anyway, so the, um, yeah, share this with people that you know. If you know somebody who has trouble sleeping, share this Facebook Live with them, please. Um, give us a heart or uh, a thumbs up if you haven't already. The hearts are best because they're, they're very nice. <laughs> they show the love, they show the love, okay. All right, so yeah, you wanna get your, your sleep um, working right. If you're having trouble with your sleep, it's definitely gonna be due to poor digestion. And what's fantastic about the therapies that we do in the office is that we have an, pretty much an unlimited, literally, 
an infinite number of therapies, and most of them are directly geared towards improving people's digestion and helping them with their emotional um, balance. And we all have emotions that we're dealing with that are imbalanced as humans. It's just part of being a human. I mean, even the Dalai Lama, even the most enlightened and gifted people have tons of emotions um, that are imbalanced, that need um, balancing, okay? So soy is not so good. Also, I've done a video about that a few times, but what happened was soy was never, ever supposed to be um, provided as a food. Soy was only for people that were in China that had been there for a few thousand years and they were starving and they figured out, wait a second, you know, that we just get this a little bit, whoops, let me just get this a little bit more focused. Um, okay, the Chinese figured out, wait a second, we have all these starving people, why don't we just take this poisonous bean, you know, that's growing, this little pea, which is the edamame, right, the soy, and if we, if we just mash it up and then we boil it for maybe, you know, a day, and then we let it start to rot and break down for another couple of days, and that should take enough poisons out of it so that then we can eat it without getting really sick and, and maybe there'll be enough protein so that we can survive. What do you think? Should we try taking the poisonous soy, which basically is truly a poison, and then we can just smash it up, you know, you know, basically mash it, mash it, mash it, mash it, and then we can boil it up for a day and then we can let it start to mold and after doing all that, we should have something that we can work with, that we can eat without starving to death. And that's what they did in China. And all those people that were using soy that were shouldn't, you know, that were starving, ended up not starving because, you know, of course, if you're starving, you need something. You just don't want to eat poison, generally speaking. All right. Yeah, there's too much stuff to cover. Uh, uh, you, you wanna? It's just, it's just too much. So I'm just doing my best. I'm glad you guys are listening. Here's my little pamphlet about soy that comes from the. This comes from the Western Price Foundation. You probably can't see it because it's backwards, right? But anyway, so um, soy causes cancer. Not a lot of people know about that. Um, the truth is, is that most soy foods. Um, are processed in such a way that the protein is destroyed. Like I said, when you boil it up and you, you do all that stuff, it destroys the protein in the soy anyway. The soy causes all kinds of reproductive problems. Um, and as a male, which is what I am, it can cause impotence, which isn't something that I'm excited about. And for women, it causes all kinds of reproductive problems and it can also cause sterility in, in, in females as well. Sandra Spellman says, narcolepsy is mentioned and discussed. His health center has holistic approaches. Okay. That's good. <laughs> okay. You can do a surprised face too. Those are always really good. All right. So soy causes all kinds of B vitamin deficiencies, like deficiency in vitamin B12. Um, use of soy dates back um, thousands of years, but so was, soy was, the truth is not necessarily that. Soy was first used as a food during the late Chow dynasty in 1136, I'm sorry, 1134 to 246 BC, only after the Chinese learned to ferment soybeans to make foods like tempeh, nado, and tamari. So, you know, they figured out, like I was saying, how to make it so that it's not so dangerous. There's a lot of rumors that soy will help, um, Oh, thanks for sending your friend the message, Yafa. That soy will help prevent osteoporosis. The truth is, is that soy foods can cause deficiencies in calcium, vitamin D, both needed, which are both needed for healthy bones, and um, calcium from bone broths and vitamin D from seafood, lard, and organ meats do prevent osteoporosis in Asian countries, not soy foods. So there's a lot of, a huge amount of misunderstanding um, yeah, that's true, you wanna soy is in all kinds of products. Um, they put it in, you know, you just look at the packages. Okay, so wheat, dairy, corn, soy, and my favorite, the sugar. Sugar, sugar, sugar. 
Okay, sugar is not so good. Sugar causes aging from the inside out. It's like cooking a person from the inside, which isn't so good. Sugar will definitely lead to those, those um, purple eyelids, okay? That's just what it does. Sugar causes thyroid disease. It causes all of our modern chronic diseases. Heart disease is the most common. Cancer is kind of common. It's among the top five or nine or so. So anyway, um, sugar is, like I said, one molecule different than cocaine. It causes AGEs, advanced glycosylated end products, which basically is the thing that causes aging. Sugar causes C-reactive protein to go up. C-reactive protein along with homocysteine is what causes heart disease. Um, sugar was what was responsible for the slave trade um, way back in the day. As you know, they had the sugar triangle between, I don't remember the exact countries, but Africa, Barbados, and what's now the United States. That's where the sugar and rum were transported and they took slaves from Africa and then they brought them to different places. They actually brought them to Central America, North America, and Barbados, and some of the other islands to grow things like sugarcane to feed people all over the world. So the United States had the lowest cost sugar. That's why sugar is so widely abused in the United States more so than any other country because we were the first to have sugar um, very inexpensively. And then they started sending it to the royalty and the armies of the, of the French and the, the English and, okay, and Europe and all over the world. As you know, there's plenty of sugar in Italian food. Not, not, not so much the, the staples, not so much like, um, you know, like the meats and things like that, but they put sugar in all their desserts and all their ice cream and that kind of thing, right? Right. Okay, guys, it has been a lot of fun. Thanks for watching. Thanks for coming to join us. Like I said, if you, if you um, please share this with people that you know, especially people who have uh, autoimmune disease, thyroid disease, or chronic brain fog. Um, they're weak, they're tired, they're nervous, they're irritable. They have narcolepsy, like somebody mentioned. Um, okay. They have depression. They have cancer. They have cancer. You know, you have to share this with them because nobody else is going to help them, right? If, if they don't find out about myself or a colleague of mine who might be doing something similar and there aren't many, there's nobody in Northern California doing this kind of work, they're gonna be stuck with their cancers, right? We've had people who have all kinds of cancers and we're putting these chemicals on their breast for breast cancer come in and after one visit, their cancers weren't gone, but they didn't have to use the medication for their breast. They got off the, all their medications. They got off radiation. They got off chemotherapy. They got off all that to get a chance to heal without using all those chemicals and poisons and craziness, okay? So yeah, share this with people you know. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for watching and we'll see you at the next Facebook Live. This is Dr. Ilya Skolnikov coming to you live and direct from Triad of Health Family Healing Center. Thank you very much. See you next time, bye.